Hi guys, it's Ben here and with the Naby Keita to Liverpool reports gathering more pace, is this the week that the Reds make their breakthrough? So various sources are now reporting that Cater wants to move to Anfield and for the first time this summer his odds to link up with the Open Club have been slashed now to 4-9 to nine on Skybet. Respected ESPN and Times journalist Gav Markothi said on Friday that an agreement had been made between the player and the club in terms of the contract length and the wage. He also indicated that Liverpool might go up to that £70 million price tag that Leipzig have slapped on the player. He did say that he wasn't 100% on that part of it. I mean would Liverpool really pay £70 million for Naby Keita? Would they pay £70 million for anybody but for someone that's not necessarily one of the world's most renowned top world-class players. Of course, he had a staggering season last year and he may well become one of the best in the world, but I'd be very surprised if that sort of bid was sanctioned. And now Amadou Makadji, a journalist who specialises in Ghanaian football, says that the opening bid is imminent. He thinks that Klopp and Keita spoke on Saturday and that a bid will be made on Sunday night and Klopp wants to play no matter how much it costs. Makadji also thinks that Keita wants to meet with Leipzig officials on Monday and they're going to try and convince him to stay. This definitely feels like the wheels are in motion for the transfer. It's been a long time coming. Over the last week or two, we've learned that the price is going to be 70 million rather than the 50 that we perhaps thought it might have been. It's starting to become clear that Keita wants to come to Liverpool and with the Van Dijk deal on the back burner, with Salah done, it looks like this is the next massive signing that Liverpool are going to look to secure. It's just a case of getting Leipzig to agree to sell. Now is it going to take a 70 million pound bid to make that happen? Are they going to settle for anything less? Would 60 be okay? They're not a club that's struggling for money, that's where they differ to Romo and even Southampton to an extent. It's a Red Bull owned club, they're not going to be messed around. We've all seen the clips, some of us have seen lots of Keita last season, some of us not anything at all but it is clear that he's a special, unique player. It's easy to make the lazy Kante comparison because of how he looks and how he plays. He's got a lot of energy, he breaks play up. But what he seems to have that Kante doesn't is the ability to drive forward with pace, take players on, create and score goals. Just looks like the absolute, complete player. Someone that would surely transform Liverpool's team completely and help them become serious title challengers this season. So from one midfield target to another, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain has refused Arsenal's latest contract offer and the Liverpool Echo have said that he's prepared to sit out the final year of his deal. Now he is keen on a move to Anfield but the Gunners have rebuffed Liverpool's initial approach for him. However, now that he has said no to that contract offer, Arsenal may be forced to reconsider should Liverpool come back in. Now, I don't see this as an alternative to Naby Keita. I see it as just another target. Also, Chamberlain can obviously play out wide. He can play a wing-back. More of an attack-minded player overall. He's young, he's homegrown, he's England international. I think there's a lot of positives to this one. His injury record's a bit of a concern. He's not been prolific in front of goal for Arsenal. But maybe he just needs a change of scenery, a change of manager, something to revitalise his career. I think we've all seen the best of him in flashes. And if the Reds can get him in 15 to 20 million, I think that'd be good business. The fact that he's keen to play on the club and keen to get into the World Cup squad. I think he's going to be determined to succeed this season. It's a transfer that I'd be more than happy to see happen. And of course, the other major target that Liverpool have this summer, Virgil van Dijk. That saga still rolls on. Carve Solicol from Sky tweeted a couple of days ago that Chelsea are looking at Rudiger from Roma and they're looking at various centre backs as alternatives to van Dijk. Haven't heard that much in terms of alternatives that Liverpool are looking at, so maybe they're still set on van Dijk and it's Chelsea that have accepted defeat in that one. And crucially, Oliver Kay from The Times says that van Dijk still wants the deal to happen. He still wants to come to Anfield and Liverpool still want it to happen too. So unfortunately, it's still just a case of being patient. We know that some big deals in recent years that Liverpool have done haven't happened until August. You know, far from ideal. I know Klopp wanted to get all his players in before pre-season, but that's clearly not going to happen. It's frustrating, of course, and what happened with Van Dijk earlier this summer was just purely embarrassing, and I think the owners, of course, have had to take a long look at themselves and how they do their business. I think fans had every right to be angry about that, but now Salah's in, everyone's calmed down, Keita seems to be finally picking up some pace. The oxlade chamberlain situation is a bit clearer now that he's turned down the Arsenal deal, and Van Dijk, unfortunately, it's just a case of wait and see. As far as the left back situation is concerned, it seems like it all rests on where Alberto Moreno ends up and if he leaves at all. There's loads of Serie A clubs interested, apparently Swansea are keen too, but Liverpool are holding out for that 15 million asking price and until they get that, they won't be signing Andrew Robertson or any other left back targets just yet. And speaking of outgoings, Daniel Sturridge looks like he's going to stay. Jurgen Klopp doesn't want to replace him because it's going to cost too much to get someone that's anywhere near as good as him, which I can completely understand. Hopefully Sturridge can stay fit and that decision will be vindicated. There's also been a report in Telefoot, a French publication, that Paris Saint Germain man have made an inquiry about Philippe Coutinho and that report claims that Liverpool have put an 87 million pound asking price on a Brazilian's head that equates to 100 million euros I'm not sure if this story has any legitimacy to it probably not but I'm sure there are clubs sniffing around Coutinho I know Barcelona have been interested for a while but he signed a new long-term deal earlier this year and all the noises from his camp have suggested that he's very happy at Liverpool and he's going to be here for this season at least and hopefully beyond that as far as I'm concerned as long as he stays fit for the majority of this season it's going to be a special campaign from him he threatened to have it last season but that injury halted him and he never quite recovered until 
later on in the campaign. I think a fully fit Coutinho this season could be as good as, quite frankly, anybody in the league. And I'm glad that there's not much speculation in regards to his future this summer. So that brings us up to speed. Leave a comment with whether you think Liverpool should spend £70 million on Naby Keita. Is that worth the money? It would double Liverpool's transfer record. It would be a massive signal of intent. It would be so unlike Liverpool to complete this absolute mega transfer. Surely it would be Liverpool's most exciting transfer of all time as well. But is £70 million a bit ridiculous? What do you think? Also let me know your thoughts on Oxlade Chamberlain. Should we spend £20, £25 million on him? Is he worth it? Is he good enough for this squad? Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff and follow me on my other socials. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. It's Ben Might Say on all of those and I'll see you next time.